Hey dolls. <clears throat> I wrote some things down on a piece of paper because it's going to give me a little guideline for what I'm about to tell you guys. Um, it's an emotional video. Um, it's going to bring up a lot of past emotions and my mind gets a little bit scattered. So I had to do a little guideline here because... I just get all scattered and my words start to mumble so forgive me if you hear paper paper rattling so <clears throat> I am a 26 year old First Nations woman I had my first daughter at 17 and I had my second daughter at the age of 24 I am making this video to tell my life story I know I'm only 26 but my life has been a roller coaster. <sighs> like many of you. <sighs> I've dealt with a lot. I've dealt with being molested at the age of four. I've dealt with being almost molested again at the age of seven. I was starved and, starved and neglected in a foster home with my own people. My mom was an addict at these times. My mom was also an orphan. She became a she became an orphan at the age of 4 or 5. Her dad was shot in an accident and her mother was committed suicide as my mom and her siblings were getting off the bus after school. <clears throat> Ever since they lost their parents, they lost themselves. <clears throat> all her brothers are deceased except for one, and they all passed away in their 40s from a heart attack. <sighs> My grandparents' death also affects their grandchildren. Because honestly, if that didn't happen, all of our lives would be totally different. So I've been dealing with suicide since the day I was born. Suicide in my culture is scary high, especially for the youth. It's heartbreaking and it's so scary, especially now that I am a mother <clears throat> of two beautiful young native women. Well, soon to be women. Crazy. <clears throat> I am a mother and I am now sober. I do good by my kids, by my partner, by myself and by the creator. Before, I was either drunk or high. And that just numbed everything, took everything off my mind, so I thought. Only in that moment it did, though. I soon learned. <sighs> At four, I was molested by my biological dad's dad, my own papa, my supposed to be Musham. Yeah, that loser. I was a baby, four years old. That day is scattered. The court process, I remember. I remember so clearly. The feeling of being scared and nervous and anxious on the stand, sitting on my auntie's lap, pointing to where I was touched by a male who was supposed to be my protector. It just makes me sick. My mom dealt with it the only way she knew how. <laughs> my mom was a street worker and an addict. I don't blame her though. She never failed me. My piece of shit dad failed me. Things happened after and we were apprehended. My mom did a standoff for 12 hours in the cold. <laughs> she did not want to let us go. 
because no matter what, she was a good mother. <clears throat> we were, me and my younger brother were sent to a farm far out of, in Saskatchewan, closer to Alberta. We stayed there for a few months and it was awesome. It was amazing. It was the best place ever. And then we got transported back to Saskatchewan and we were sent to a home on my reserve. There we were picked on. The, one of the teen boys there tried to touch me. That was the almost molested at seven but I screamed my head off. I screamed my head off. We were in the pool swimming. I remember that day so clear. We were in the pool swimming and he swam underwater and he tried touching me between my legs. Immediately I started kicking and he popped up out of the water and I was screaming my head off. I was screaming my head off. I just got out of the pool and I left. I went to play with my little brother for the rest of that day. Never tried it again. <clears throat> they let our cereal get soggy before they called us to eat. They fed their kids before us all the time. They would order takeout food and take it and their kids to the room and send me and my little brother to our room to play while they ate. <sighs> I finally told my mom after my little brother was shoved outside on the balcony in a thunderstorm, raining, lightning, thunder, he was only five. They had him in his gitch and they in his gitch and they pushed him outside. They were watching him and he was crying and banging on the door. And I remember being scared, trying to yell at them and tell them to stop. After that day I had it. My little brother didn't know better. He didn't know if he was gonna get hurt if he told my mom. So, I was the brave one and I told her. I told her everything that happened and she took us back. Immediately that day we went home for a visit and I told her I cried, I didn't want to go back there. And immediately she took us back, the process got started and we were never in that home again. Their home was investigated and shut down. My mom still had her addictions, but the thing is, she was a functioning addict because we always had what we needed. We were fed, we were clothed, we always had a roof over our shoulders. If she was out, my, sis my older sister was old enough to take care of us. No matter her addiction, we always had the best. We even had what we wanted. like. Our needs were met, but we also had what we wanted. I remember having a skateboard, a scooter, rollerblades, a bike, a pair of skates for the winter, and a skateboard. I didn't even skateboard. Like Now I look at it, she parented out of guilt. And I don't blame her for anything. That's the thing. Like I don't blame her. And she knows that now today. She knows that now today. By the time my sister turned 18, she got her own apartment. <clears throat> she always had the best of the best. She was the most gorgeous woman I've ever laid my eyes on. She was honestly something else, like a goddess to me. Like I wanted to be like her, like everything. I looked up to her. If I had boy problems, I'd go run to my sister. <laughs> If I was sad, I'd pick up the phone and call her because by the time I'd hang up, we'd be laughing. <laughs> she liked to drink kokanee. That was her favorite beer. She never drank hard stuff. It was always beer. In my culture, there's this thing called bad medicine and it can be passed through anything. Anything you can think of. A smoke, a bottle cap. She had a cap placed in her shoe. Someone had hit her with bad medicine. She used to tell me about this dream that she would have, that this black thing on all fours would bother her all the time. Now that I think back, it was probably the bad medicine and they call those th all black things on all fours soldier dogs and they carry bad medicine and bad spirits. 
back then I thought it was just a nightmare, like a bad dream. <clears throat> now I know that it was bad medicine. If only I knew now what I knew then. Or only if I knew now. Only if I... You guys know what I mean. I swear to God, you guys know what I mean. <laughs> oh my God. See what I mean? My brain gets scattered when emotions flood over me. But sharing my story is a part of healing for me. And it could be also healing for you guys. It's not till after she passed away and we went to an elder that we found out it was bad medicine. <sighs> Ever since she left, my world has never been the same. I started to drink. I started experimenting with drugs. But that's one thing I've never IV used. Not once have I IV used. And not ever will I IV used. IV used. I've seen the way it destroys families. And then I turned 16. And my summer of drinking and partying cut short. The morning I woke up and remembered my dream. I had a dream of my sister. I had a dream that I had a big belly and she came to this house I was at. She's like, oh, you're so cute. Like, I can't wait till she's born. And I was like, yeah, I know. In my dream, it was like everything was normal. Like, she was alive again and I was pregnant. That morning, I woke up and I was brushing my teeth. And I remembered my dream. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I need to get to the doctor, like, now. So my sister, Kaheo, came with me. Sure enough, I was pregnant. And I was just crying. I was like, oh, my gosh. That's the day I became sober. For, for two and a half years, I was sober. Then Kalia's dad had already slept with a childhood best friend of mine. We were kind of on the rocks, and then he went and slept with my first cousin. That was the end of it. My little baby wasn't even two yet, come to think of it. <sighs> I turned 20. And that hit me hard. That was the age my sister was when she committed suicide. And I like always had wondered like what was she going through? I was lost, I was still grieving, I was trying to find myself, and I met Junebug, <laughs> my partner now. Oh, and we used to party and drink all the time. A few months after hanging out, he lost his mom to cancer. After that, he started coming around more and camping a lot more. This was her ring. Forgive my ratchet nails, I gotta get them done. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then, February 2013 rolls around and we made it official. And we st slowly started sobering up and dummying up together. And then in the winter of 2014 to 2015, I got pregnant. And I ended up miscarrying because of just, it was just, uh, it just came like it was just a natural miscarriage. It, my body and my mind and my spirit was just overwhelmed and stressed out. I was going through a lot. After I miscarried, we kind of fell apart. We started to drink and dabble into opioid, opioids. Uh, we ended up splitting up for about a month. He stopped and I kept on. I got addicted without even knowing. I was so naive, I thought I could do it and just like quit and I'd be okay. Like I never really, like when my mom was sick, when I'd see her sick before, I didn't know that opioids was her choice of drug that she did. I had no idea what drug she did. She never did it in front of us. We were never allowed around. She was always so discreet and clean about it. Like it was, I don't know, I just never, I was so naive. I was so sick, I was so sick that I got a kidney infection. I couldn't even walk. I ended up on the methadone program. I was so ashamed then to be on the harm reduction program. <clears throat> I was on it for a year and the highest dose I went up to was 28 milligrams. I came down right to 0.5 of a milligram and then I was off. I still felt 
the insomnia, but I wasn't aching. I wasn't in pain or anything. And I still craved a little bit. Then a couple months went by and boom, my valley girl was sent to me, my little savior. Ugh, ugh, babies, I'm telling you, the creator has a plan for us all. I swear we're in his hands, just believe. <sighs> but this harm reduction program, you guys don't need to be ashamed. If there's anybody out there ashamed, it was helpful. It's helpful if you don't abuse it. I'm no longer ashamed, and you shouldn't be either. There's help, and you are not alone. Don't feel ashamed. My life is one of many that should inspire others. I've been through the worst in my most important years of my life. They say a person is shaped by what they learn and see from the age that they start um, at, like comprehending things to the age of seven. What I'm proud to say now is that instead of letting all that get to me and break me, I am learning from it. I've had my same job for four years, going on four years now, working with kids in care. I work hand in hand with the Ministry of Social Services. I'm getting into modeling. I've always wanted to model. As a kid, my dad, when I'd get new clothes, they'd always let me model all my clothes in front of them because that's what I always wanted to do every single piece of clothing <laughs> I'd make them sit down on their bed and I'd walk down the hallway and model my clothes it's, it's just always been a dream and it's so awesome to finally actually love myself now and be proud of what I overcame to get out there and be confident I'm a damn good wife and I'm a damn good mom I'm not officially a wife, but I'm a damn good fiance, I should say. There's days, like I'm, every day I wake up, it's a new day. And it is also a reminder that I defeated suicide and addiction the day before. After every day, I thank the creator and I always pray. Some days I still feel like giving up, I still get weak but I don't because those sweet voices inside my head that are calling me mommy or that sexy voice that calls me babe or that familiar voice that calls me her baby or those strong manly voices that say hey sis or my niece or hey cuz those are the voices those are the voices that keep me sane those are the voices that help me defeat suicide and addiction. And so can you. So please don't give up. You are needed on this earth. Even if it feels like you're not needed or no one loves you or you've just been through a breakup or the person you love called you the dirtiest name in the book, they don't mean it. Anger makes you say the most ugliest things. But at the end of the day, you are needed and loved and you serve a purpose on this earth because you are in the God's hands and he has a plan for you. And if my mom from a street worker addict to a social worker, and if me, the things that I've been through, the addictions that I've dealt with and overcame them four years sober, you guys can too. Anybody can. Honestly, there's so many more inspirational stories out there. We're just a couple of them. <clears throat> Everything that happens in life is for a reason. It's either a lesson or a blessing. We are all human and we are all beautiful and we are all one of a kind. With that being said, I hope everybody has a blessed day and a blessed life. And don't forget to eat, pray, and love.